I teach economics at the University of Manchester. In this video, I want to give you a very brief walkthrough through an alternative content delivery technique, which we introduced here for a particular course in uh, for year one advanced maths course for economic students. It's a very large unit. Of course, this year, everyone was forced to think about alternative content delivery ways other than a lecture. Mostly we've done that by recording videos like these to replace the lecture. But in this particular unit, we decided to do something else. We decided to deliver the content through something like an interactive textbook. And I just want to give you a very brief insight in how that looks like. And the reason why I'm interested in this, and perhaps some of you are interested in this, is that we are considering using this even once we are allowed to have lectures and contact the students again. Um, but by perhaps delivering the content through such an online asynchronous way, we can free up time in our meetings with students to do something else, something more interactive, something that helps students perhaps a little bit better in the process of learning the material. But rather than explaining everything in words, let me just show you some things. This is my website, a course website, it's a Blackboard page. And the technology which I'll show you in a moment is called Mobius by Digital Ed. But there are other technologies. I know Xert, for instance, is an example of a technology which allows you to do similar things. So perhaps first you can notice this website is organized by weeks. So we have a little sub pages for every week. Let me go to week four, for instance, and there's some information and learning outcomes. And then the core of the material is delivered through these what we call lessons. So let me go into one of these lessons to give you an idea of what that looks like. So on first sight, this is just a website, perhaps not even a very attractive looking, very nice website. There's unfortunately only limited ways to manipulate this. And you can sort of click through the sections here. And now the, the first thing that's, however, of course, available to normal websites is that you can tie in videos like here, for instance, that is just Sorry, a video. Um, let me just stop that here. But then the, the aspect of this, what makes this an interactive sort of website or sort of an interactive textbook is that you can explain something and then immediately ask students a question to see. So students can see, have I actually understood? So there was in a video explaining something, then here's a, a question. Okay, there are two functions. This is about multivariate functions. Which of these two plots matches to which function? So let me just guess an answer here and students can do this and then they can immediately check, am I right? No, in this case, I'm wrong, okay? And they can sort of, you know, confirm that it's right the, uh, the other way round. Okay, so this is an example where there wasn't much feedback given here, but let me, let me sort of move on. So here's another example. There's just some text delivery, delivery of material with pictures. And that's the next question. Okay, there's a function. And we're asking what's the level curve at a, a particular value. And then again, students have to give an answer here, describe the shape of the level curve, let's say it's quadratic. Um, and there's another question. And then so we have a set of questions. And then we ask, okay, students can check how did I do since I guessed all of this, I got all of this wrong. So in this case, I'm actually providing some feedback, you can decide whether students should be seeing that feedback or not, or here. So we're just always students can see what the feedback, uh, what the feedback is. Yeah. So and I think that possibly gives you enough of an idea of what what this means here. Here, here we have another sort of matching um, question. Okay. Um, I didn't even check now whether I got right. So I think this gives you enough of an idea of what this sort of technology uh, does and why it's called interactive. Now, there are a few important aspects to this which makes this particularly attractive for perhaps more quantitative subjects. Firstly, perhaps you could guess by looking at this, I've written all of this in LaTeX and then basically copy and paste it across. There's a bit of editing left in that Mobius um, engine, but basically my material is written in LaTeX. Um, for us who like using LaTeX, that is a huge advantage. The second aspect is that you can build in randomization into these questions. So let me just quickly show you, here's a question. Um, 
On this occasion, I haven't built in any randomization, but you see, for instance, there's a factor two in this equation. So what you could do is you could make this a random value. So the next time the student comes, it's a four, and then it changes the answer, and the answers can adapt automatically to this. The reason why you can do this is because underneath that engine, or this engine links to Mathematica. So you can basically write the code hidden be behind these questions to randomize this. And that also allows you to do quite complex things when you ask questions. You can possibly guess that if that's an engine that allows you to ask questions, you can also deliver tests, even exams through this engine and make use of this sort of randomization technology. Uh, which is excellent because especially in times where students have to do exams remotely because it means that every student sees a somewhat different exam paper. In this particular occasion where here at the University of Manchester we use Mobius, this system links with our learning environment, virtual learning environment Blackboard in our, uh, in our case. That means you can, you can see whether students have done a particular lesson, whether they have done the questions and how they have done with these questions, if you're interested in, in looking at this. So you, you can track back what students, what students have, um, have done. So the reason why I was keen to, to sort of record this and, and, and tell you this is, yes, we were sort of forced to use this technology this year due to the COVID pandemic and us not being allowed to, um, to, to give lectures. But I received a lot of really good feedback from students on this resource. They really appreciate the fact that they have an asynchronous resource and that they have a resource which immediately allows them to test their understanding as they go through the material. So even when we are allowed to go back to lectures, in this particular course, I will keep using this resource and thereby freeing up time for face-to-face -face meetings to do other things. What, has, what this pan pandemic has sort of therefore forced upon us, I think in many occasions will actually stay with us and we will pick the things which actually work quite well, like in this particular case, this is this sort of content delivery and carry that forward into the future. 